He didn't tell you to do any other thing. He said, just look. Just look. And you will leave. No effort. No struggle. Just look. It's not tough to look. It's not difficult to look. Say look. And leave. When the children of Israel were in the wilderness and they were beaten by snake. Deadly snake. And what the Lord did was he instructed them to build it. To make a bronze stake and put it on a stick. And in that camp, the instruction is if you have been beaten, look. When you look, you will leave. Those who say they don't believe it, how can it be by looking? I'll be healed of snake bite. They all died. But those who looked, God's instructions are not too tough and not too difficult. It's man that makes it difficult. Just like when they were in Egypt, he told them, just, he said, kill an animal, put the blood on the doorposts and lintels, and you just stay indoors. No struggle. Just stay in the house. Let me do the job. And the Bible says that when the dead angel came and all he needed to do was to see the blood. When I see the blood, I'll pass over it. We don't know how much we have been protected because of who we are in Christ. We don't. We don't leverage on our relationship with Christ. We don't leverage on it. We think that we are the victims when we are the victor. We are more than conquerors. Whatsoever a born of God overcometh the world. And the victory that overcomes the world is our faith. Look and live. That's all. Look and leave my brother Look to Jesus and It is recorded in his word Hallelujah What time look at me? Come on, give Jesus a clap offering. Give him a clap offering all over this house. Amen. Amen. What an awesome God we serve. Go to seven people, tell them all you need to do is look and live.
to God. What a mighty God we serve. Let's celebrate the evergreen evangel voices. That wonderful time of worship and songs ministration. We thank God for making you instruments in the hands of God. And of course, uh, Reverend Tunde Bangboye celebrating for such a wonderful presentation on leadership and teamwork. The, the Bible says we should be doers of the word, not hearers only. Only doers of the word are blessed in their deeds. And these are what you shared with us are what you get in business schools and, and people pay heavily for stay a few days in the hotel to share. But you're getting it free of charge in the church. That's what it should be. Yes, celebrate Jesus. Don't take it for granted. When you come to church, you actually come to learn, to know more things from the scriptures and from in every way that will help you navigate your life here on earth. So, never take the things you share that are shared here for granted. They will help you. They will help you in life. Help you in your individual endeavors. And the beautiful thing about church is that you, you can practice in church. No one will kill you for making mistakes. And so, you are, by the time opportunities avail for you in the secular, you are ready. You are ready because you already know what to do. Praise God. Let me also say to us, particularly in the headquarters, even though this also applies to every branch, that when we come to church, we come to worship God. We come to have a fellowship and relationship in our relationship with God. And it's very important that in our conduct, we respect the Holy Spirit. Uh, when you come to church, is that's not the place to come and start to share with visitation with somebody. More especially when the service is ongoing. When the service is over, you can share fellowship. You can go to the cuisine or share coke or whatever. Snack amongst yourself is part of church. It's part of fellowship. But it's wrong. And I, I hear this very, very very uh, more with those of us who, are, who say we have been old in church. You can come to church and be discussing outside. The message is going on. The service is ongoing. That's when you are outside with your friends. It's disrespect to the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says, grieve not the Holy Ghost. If you are not ready to come and sit in church when you left your house, then sit at home. You don't have to come. Sit at home. Don't come here and set the wrong example as if we don't, we don't honor God. The Bible tells us to honor God in all our conduct. It's wrong. You left your home, drove to this place or took a taxi or whatever means of transportation that brought you and then what we see is you hanging around with your friends outside. That is, it's not only disrespect, it's rude to God. And it's important that we address it and please don't do that. It's better you stay outside. I will not stay here under my watch and allow you to grieve the Holy Spirit and hinder, and hinder the rest of the people from being blessed. So if you don't want to come and sit in the church, then stay at home until you are ready to come to church and sit in the church service. And then at the end of the service, you can fellowship. We encourage that. You can fellowship as long as you want, but not during service time. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Very important. Give Jesus a clap offering. <laughs> All right. Psalm 34 verse 5. Psalm 34 verse 5. I'll be sharing briefly with you what I've called deliverance from terror. Deliverance from terror. Father, we ask that your grace will Help us this morning, even as we share your word. 
Father, give us understanding. Let everyone understand what the Spirit is saying. And let us know he has strengthened more than ever before. For the blessings we will receive, we covenant that the glory is ascribed to you. And everyone that believes, shout a loud amen. amen. They looked unto him, look and leave, and were what? Enlightened. And their faces were not ashamed. I love that scripture. I love that scripture in Psalm 34 verse 5. They looked unto him. He started with, uh, I will bless the Lord at all times. The, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. And he said, that my soul shall make his boast in the Lord. And the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. In other words, I will, I will scream hallelujah. I will shout hallelujah. I will live for joy in the presence of of my enemy because my eyes are, are focused on God and not on what he's doing. The humble shall he hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord. David was in trouble when this was happening and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Whatever fear you have, God will deliver you. I thought I would hear a loud amen. A louder amen. God, with, you, you know, we are living in a, a world that is inundated with fear, terror, sudden fear. You never expected it just hit you. Destruction. Sudden, some, I mean, something that dismays you. You are, you are confounded. That's the world we are living in. And as you know, it's a fallen world. And as the world begins to spiral downwards more and more, more you begin to see satanic activities, wickedness in, in different places, evil all around. There's hardly anywhere you turn that you don't hear of something evil, disaster, here and there. You read. Watch the television, watch, listen to the news. The newspaper is awash with all kinds of terrible things happening. And no one is exempted. And so the, the, issue, the issue is, is it how we are God just going to fold our hands as God's people and allow these things to just ride the roughshod over us? That's not God's plans and intentions. It's not his plans and intention. In Romans 8, 22 to 23, look at the, what the scripture says. Romans 8, 22 and 23. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and traveleth in pain together until now. The whole creation, there is agitation. For we know that the whole creation groaned and traveled on and then he said, and not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the spirit, even we ourselves, we are groaning within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, to wait the redemption of our body. We, we, want, we want to put off this body that's filled with pain and sickness and disease and agony, things that are coming upon the world. Fear and terror. But I want to encourage you. There is nothing the devil brings against you. That can defeat you. I said there is nothing the devil brings against you. That can defeat you. There is nothing. I say it again. The devil brings against you. That can defeat you. A loud amen. One John 4, 4 says. That for we have overcome them little children. Not we are going to overcome. We have already overcome them. You have overcome whatever is terrorizing you. No matter what it is. Be it doctor's report. Be it fear on the highway or flying. Whatever it is, which is wizards, charms, whatever it is, 
Because you are already in Christ. You have overcome them. Because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Say to yourself, the greater one lives in me. I am not, listen, I'm not feeling you this morning. Say it loud to yourself. 1 John 5, 4. Listen to the scriptures. We don't go by what we see. We go by the scriptures. We live our life from above. 1 John 5, 4. For whatsoever is born of God, overcome it the world. Overcome it is the present continuous. It doesn't just stop. Whatever it is that hits you, you're already over an overcomer. Whatsoever is born of God, overcome the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. Our faith in what Christ has done for us. Amen? A louder amen. amen. John 15, 19. John 15, 19. John 15, 19. If you were of this world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of this world, but I've chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hated you. Jesus is saying, we are not of the world. Others can be affected, not you. I say others can be affected, not you. Because you are operating from a higher dimension. A higher level. The believer functions from a platform that has known, that does not have margin for defeat. You're undefeatable. You cannot be destroyed. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Glory to God. I say glory to God. They are not of this world. Look at John 16, 33. These things I have spoken unto you that in me you, shall, you might have what? Peace. In the world you shall have what? Tribulation. But be of good cheer. What happened? Put it in amplified version. Amplified version of John 16, 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace. In the world you have tribulation and distress and suffering and terror. But be courageous. Be confident. Be undaunted. Be filled with joy in the midst of the battle. Why? I have overcome the world. My conquest is accomplished. And my victory abiding. The victory is already guaranteed. Somebody shout hallelujah. Put it in message translation. Message translation. I've told you all this so that trust in me, you will not be unshakable. And you will be unshakable and assured. Deeply at peace. In this godless world. You will continue to experience difficulties. But take heart. I have conquered the world. Somebody shout hallelujah. I have conquered the world. Take heart. Put it in New Living Translation. I have conquered the world. I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Glory to God. You see, you get defeated by terror when you are looking, your eyes are fixated on something else. Your defeat comes by looking at the wrong place. I've told you several, many times that distractions come by looking around. When you begin to look at the things happening around us today, you'll be distracted. You'll be wondering whether God has gone on vacation. You'll be distracted. And you'll be shocked how many people who say they are believers that are distracted. You say, Brother Mike, how do you know? I know by what they say. I know by the thing they push out. I know. I know by what they push out. 
All you need to see is, is listen to the things they say, the discussions they have. You can locate them easily. I don't need to pray to God to reveal to me because I already see it. I already see you are frightened. You are afraid. You don't even know whether you survive tomorrow. You don't know how you are, where the next meal will come from. Distractions come from looking around. Defeat comes from looking behind you. Discouragement comes by looking down. But deliverance comes when you look up. When you look up, you fail. When I'm looking up, I can't see, I, I can't be looking around at the same time. I know that my help comes from above. Praise the Lord. David was so overwhelmed that he refused to look around. He refused to look at the rejection. He refused to look at the denial. He refused to look at the accusations. No, he refused to look. No, he, his eyes were fixated on God. David. That was why he was able to defeat Goliath. He was the one who wrote that psalm. Put it on the screen, Psalm 34, verse 4. The, I saw the Lord and he heard me. And it, I didn't seek man. I saw the Lord. And God heard me. Not man. I didn't allow the social media to, 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 to speak to me. Not social media. I saw the law. Let me tell you, you are a product of the environment you hang around. When you hang around negative people, the things that will come out of your mouth will be negative. When you hang around people who don't believe in progress, you will never aim for progress because they will always tell you how it will never work. When you hang around people who have their mind made up about certain things, they will never change no matter even if God is telling them that this is not the way it is. No, they tell God, God, you are making a mistake. Such people will never help you progress. I saw the Lord and the Lord heard me and delivered me from what? From what? From what? No, from some of the fears. Whatever you are afraid of, you can be delivered from all of them. It's possible to be delivered. From all my fears, verse 6, verse 5. They, then he said they looked unto him. Their faces were enlightened. They look unto him. They were able to see clearly. They looked unto him. They got the right perspective. They look unto you. How many of you know that God's ways are higher than their ways? No, no, no. You know his ways are higher than their ways? You know what we do? Believers pray according to their will and say God endorse it. God doesn't need your permission to answer prayers the way he wants. He doesn't. He is God. You are not. Tell your neighbor he is God. You are not. Say it again. Say it again. I'm tired of believers making God a liar. Believers making God a liar. I'm tired of it. God is to ever true can ever always be trusted. Even when you don't understand, you trust him. You commit and know that he's right always. He can never be wrong. Can I hear a loud amen? I saw him. My face was enlightened. Your face was confused and distracted and dismayed because you are not seeking him. You are looking up to man. And they were not ashamed. Their faces were enlightened and they were not disappointed. When God enlightens you, there can be no disappointment. There can be no distraction. There can be no shame. There is no way you will be embarrassed. You can't see reproach when God.
light is here. Glory to God. And so David wrote that psalm. And David had many opportunity to be discouraged. It was David that no one gave a chance. When others were, were being pointed at, David was busy at the backside of the desert just honoring God. He just loved God. They said that they don't believe in him. He should not be the one. But he was just busy. I look unto him, my face enlightened. And I cannot be disappointed. They say I'm not a king material. But I look up to him. And I was not disappointed. Eliab was rejected. Abinadab was rejected. Shammah was rejected. And, and, and Samuel said, I, I will proceed further. Until David, whose eyes are on God, was sought for. And here comes Samuel to David. We have been waiting for you. We have been waiting for you. While others were joking, joking for position, joking to be noticed, you are seeking the Lord. There is no way you will be ashamed. And Samuel said that we can't proceed any further until David arrives. Let me tell you what God has planned for you. No one will take it from you. I say no one will take it from you. Keep your eyes on him. Keep your eyes on him. If there was a time we needed to keep our eyes on the Lord, this is a time. Your eyes should be on him. Not on anyone. Can I hear loud amen? A believing amen. Abraham was dismayed, confused. When Lord took the better part in the, in the man's eye, Abraham was done for. But here comes God. Now that Lord has gone. Abraham, look from where you are. <laughs> Don't look at what is happening. Look from there. As far as your eyes can see. Including what Lord took. They all belong to you. What are you looking at? You've allowed the terror of life to overwhelm you. And you are, you are now speaking it, forgetting that the Bible says death and life are what? Death and life are what? I've never seen believers so fearful like they are now. What type of nonsense is that? Is God a liar? Is Bible no more the infallible, erroneous, impregnable, authoritative, irreversible word of God? Never seen so fearful believers. Look from where you are. In Zechariah 9, 9 to 13, prisoners of hope are told, to look to the stronghold. Look to the stronghold. Prisoners of hope. We are not prisoners of hopelessness. We are prisoners of hope. Confident expectation. That it will turn around. Amen. That God will fight our battles. Amen. Zechariah 9. From verse 9. Put it on the screen for me. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh. Unto the his jaws and having salvation slowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt and fall of an ass. And I will cut out the chariot of the, the, from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. And the battle bow shall be cut off and they shall speak peace unto the heathen. And the dominion shall be from sea to even to sea and from river even to the ends of the earth. As for thee also by the covenant blood of, of thy covenant have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein is no water. Wherever pit you are in where there is no water, I command you to come out of it. Come out of it. The pit that wants to destroy you. Whatever pit they dug for you, you will not enter into it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look at it. He says, as for thee also. 
by the blood of thy covenant, because you're a covenant child, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit, wherein is no water. Twelve. Turn you to the stronghold. Stop looking at your challenge. Stop looking at the terror. Turn you to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. We are prisoners of confident expectation. Even today, do I declare that I will render double? I declare by the authority of heaven, double is your portion. For everything they have taken from you, double is your portion. Double is your portion. Double is your portion. Double is your portion. That's what he said. When you turn to the stronghold and not looking at your circumstance. Psalm 20 says, verse 7, some trust in chariots, some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord. We will put our eyes on the name of the Lord. He will put food on my table, clothes on our back, shelter over our head. Don't you understand that Goliath was, the Bible was careful to, de to describe the armor of Goliath to us. I think in three verses, three long verses, describing inti intimidating armor. This man had been terrorizing God's people for 40 years. I mean, 40 days and night. 40 days and night. Couldn't sleep. They wake up hearing Goliath's voice. And they go to bed hearing his voice. I wonder what voice you are hearing concerning your career, your profession, your marital life. What voice are you hearing concerning your finance, your children? What voice concerning your health? What are you hearing? Who has jumped on your shoulder and speaking to you that you have no hope? Goliath was a terror to God's people. And so as long as Saul and his army kept their eyes on Goliath, they could never, never be delivered. Never! They had all the promises they were covenant people. God loved them. But they were not delivered. Why? Their eyes were on Goliath. Their eyes were on Goliath. What is giving you revelation is newspaper. Social media. Your friends and your peers who have formed their opinion. And you say you're a Christian. Where is God in your plan? Where is God in your thought? Where is God? You see, you can't, you can't take sides with God and be ashamed. They were running. But here comes David, who had had a robust relationship with God. At the backside of his desert. He turned his disadvantage into an, an advantage. They, they, they relegated him to the backside of the desert. But he said, that doesn't change anything. It doesn't change my relationship with God. And David will always sing unto God. No wonder when he came. He never dignified Goliath by Connelly's name. Who is this uncircumcised that he would defy the armies of Israel? Who is he? And they told him, his brothers tried to discourage him. Brothers. Brothers. They tried to discourage him. He walked away knowing whom he was. I'm a covenant child. I have covenant with God. I don't know where you stand, but I I have covenant with God. I know, I know, I know we attend the same church, but I still don't know where you stand with God. I know where I stand. For I know in whom I believe. And I'm persuaded. He's able to preserve that which I committed to him. Glory to God. 
the fact that everyone comes to the same church does not mean we stand in the same place. Your standing is, uh, is predicated on your belief. Who do you believe? And so David said, who is this uncircumcised? Well, while Goliath was still trying to figure him out, bam, he ran towards Goliath. Ran towards him. I'm, 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 I'm busy. I have an assignment to complete. Went towards him and before Goliath could look up, he was down. Your Goliath is coming down. No matter the Goliath threatening and terrorizing you day and night, I declare by the authority of heaven, he's coming down. He's coming down. He's coming down. Goliath came down before every person. Why? Because David's eye was on the Lord. It was on the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Psalm 27, who shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and foes, came up to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp around me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rises up around me, I could have been looking at the host encamping around me. I could have been looking at the war around me. Why am I not afraid? This one thing will I be confident. And that will I seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold. While others are looking at the war, I'm enjoying the beauty of Christ. I celebrate Jesus. Do you know the reason you are saved is to enjoy God? That's the only way. Many of you are having problems because you don't enjoy God. Just enjoy him. Enjoy his love for you. Enjoy his faithfulness. Nathaniel Bassi said, if you want to see what he has done, look at me. Just look at me. I'm a testimony. Brought me out of the merry clay. Set my feet on the rock. Who am I? That he will allow me into his presence to worship him. I can't come there if not for his grace. So why wouldn't I enjoy him now that he allowed me into his presence? Say, let's come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy and find grace for help at every time of need. Glory to God. So while David was busy, enjoyed the beauty of God, look at what happens in verse 5. Verse 5. For in the time of what? Help me. In the time of what? He shall do what? Where? And in the secret of his what? Shall he what? He shall set me upon what? Verse 6. And now, your head will be lifted up above your enemies. Round about thee. Therefore, will I offer in his tabernacle. Sacrifice of joy. I will sing. Yeah, I will sing. Somebody shout hallelujah. While others are terrorized, I will be singing. Because my eyes are on him. Oh, now I know why David decided not to be like the rest. In Psalm 91, look at David. Verse 1. He said, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall what? Abide. You say, Brother Mike, how do I hide in the secret place? I hide in the world. The name of the Lord is what? And the Lord and his word are what? One. The Lord and his word are what? One. Proverbs 18 tells it. The name of the Lord is what? A strong tower. And the righteous does what? I lay claim to the promises. And I'm safe. And I'm safe. Others are running here. They are, I'm safe. The righteous are bold as lions. 
So put back Psalm 91, verse 1. So I dwell in the secret place of the Most High, and I'm abiding under a shadow, just like a, a hen, a, a, a hen, a hen covers the little chick. You dare not go near. He will unleash his, the venom on you to ever touch the little chick. If a hen can take care of the little chick, is it God that will not take care of you? Watch this. He said in verse 2, because I am abiding there, it's making me see the awesomeness of God. The mightiness of God. All mightiness of God. It's making me see that this God has muscles that he flexes. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? That is, is load, that in him there is no defeat. And because of that, my language, I've been speaking foul language, but my language has changed. I will say of the Lord, not of the devil. I am not talking and advertising what the devil is doing. I will say of the Lord, you are my refuge. You are my fortress. My God in him I will trust. Surely, because I am singing a different song, which is in alignment with heaven, he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and on thy wing shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that fly by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall on your side. 10,000 on the right side. And even if a million comes against you, you will be a spectator. I say you will be a spectator. He said none of them will come nigh you. Only with your eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thy, thou hast made the Lord, you made a choice to look up to him, which is my refuge, even the most high habitation. There shall no evil befall thee. Neither shall any play come nigh the other For he shall give his angels charge to keep you in where? They shall bear thee up in their hands. Thou lest thou dash thy foot against stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and dragon shall thou trample on thy feet. Because you have set your love upon him. He will deliver you. He will set you on high because you have called his name. He shall call, we will call upon his name, will answer you. He will be with you in trouble. He will deliver you and honor you. With long life will he satisfy you. And show you his salvation. When Peter walked upon the water in Matthew 14, and he was looking at Jesus, he was walking upon his challenge. The moment he stopped looking at him, he started sinking. Maybe you are sinking in your challenge because you've stopped looking unto him. They looked unto him. Their faces were lightened and they were not disappointed. As you look to him today, this God will not disappoint you. You will not see shame. The dream that the wicked has for you, it will never come to pass. What belongs to you, no one will take it from you. In this same place, the people who have been laughing at you will be forced to testify with you. The sickness, the disease, the fashion that thing will kill you, you will rise above it. Your baby will be dedicated. Your marriage will be conducted. Your business will thrive. In the name of Jesus. The creation, the whole creation have been ordered to see to your good. You will succeed. Listen, I will hear your testimony. I know I will hear your testimony. Delay is not denial. Did you hear me? And David said, 
I will lift up my eyes to the hills, to the hills. from whence from where cometh my help. help. My help cometh from the Lord. The Lord which made heaven and earth. He said, He will the Son. of heaven to declare that whatever had been fashioned from the pit of hell terrorizing your life today it comes to an end it comes to an end it comes to an end the blood that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. It speaks on your behalf. I say it speaks on your behalf. The sun shall not smite you by day. The moon shall not smite you by night. In the name of Jesus. The God that planted you in this country has a portion for you. And that portion I declare no matter the vicissitudes of life your portion will never be taken from you. 
it will never be taken from you the land will answer to you the land will answer to you no more delays in your life no more defeats in your life no more disappointment in your life you will not see reproach you will not see shame in the name of Jesus others may be passing through adversity but you are not others you are not others that whirlwind blowing around you I command it now clear 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 that sister whose marriage has been delayed for several years in fact you are here and you have already given up hope but God said I should tell you he has remembered you this year he has remembered you this year he has remembered you this year thank you Lord some of you you've lost so much in your finance but God said I should let you know that restoration is coming to you you will recover all you will recover all I see a breakthrough technological breakthrough in this house hmm. thank you father thank you father because one of our young people will soon be announced to the world receive it now father we give you praise Father, we give you the honor. Thank you for your loving kindness. It is well. It is well. You know, Isaiah chapter 3 says, Say ye to the righteous, it shall be well. No, that was before Jesus came. But for you, it is not it shall be well. It is well. I say, it is well. It is well. As I, I see massive testimonies. It's affecting every area. It's coming like a deluge. The Holy Spirit is taking over. Can I hear loud amen? Before this match is over, what you are expecting, receive it now. Receive it now. Thank you, Father. We give you the praise. In Jesus' name. Come on, shout a loud amen. Shout a loud hallelujah. Shout praise the Lord. Come on, give him a shout in the house. Amen. You may be seated. Now I want to give opportunity to those of you who say, Brother Mike, I want to receive Christ into my life. I want him to come into my life. I've tried to manage my life all these years. It is not working. But coming to church today, I'm prompted. I want to say, Jesus be running but I surrender today listen to me the sin that will send you to hell is unbelief in what Jesus has done for you don't reject him it is free of charge you don't pay for anything other than say I believe once you say I believe you'll be translated into his kingdom you want my prayer you heard the message 
but the first things first. Because you begin to actualize the promises, you have to be in the kingdom. You want this prayer? Take your Bible, take your bag. Come here, come here, let us pray together. Leave your seat and come. Sit, leave your seat.